Hi everyone, my name is Mark, and starting with this series of videos, which is integral calculus from an artist's perspective, we'll explore using computer graphics for doing mathematics, primarily integral calculus uh, from an approximation point of view. Right? So it is well known that uh, since Newton's days that you could calculate integrals and get exact volumes or areas, but as most of you know, or many of you know, that sometimes an exact integral is very, very difficult to do. Now for a common shapes like this sphere, which is actually, uh, in this case, it's actually, there's actually a sphere within this sphere, or for this, which is just a quadratic curve here and a linear curve extruded up into the z uh, dimension, calculating, approximating integrals with computer graphics now is becoming a reality. Just maybe one more generation of computers if I wish I had a faster one. But, um, so and many times a good approximation is all that's really needed. So let's just see what we can do with what we currently have. So let's get this running. And what I have here is this cube and it's called the approximator cube. Alright? So within here, let's see, so there's my cube in the space, and here's my sphere within the sphere. And um, just so what we'll do is we'll just load this sphere up with these cubes, and we'll try and approximate the integral based on the volume of this cube. And you can see here that on this interval, I'll just, I'll just press this key once here, and you'll get an idea. That in this case, I put in one, two, three, four, five six cubes into the sphere and they all have a width, length, and height of 0 0.2 you might call it meters, feet, inches, whatever and this is the uh, volume of those of course and there's the approximate integral associated with those six cubes and you might verify that the six times 0 0.008 into this scene and so let's just run this thing real quick and just crank these in here and just let's see what it does all right so the limitation on the first pass, of course, is doing this approach, is that the cubes are quite big. And there's going to be a lot of space in between them. But the advantage is, is that it doesn't tax the computer near as much. And the, what's cool about this is when you fill it up like this, the for me, the error term is when a cube escapes from the surface of the outer sphere. And it's going to come up. It might be sometimes it's hidden in the back. But you can see it's still trying to fill it in. And sometimes you'll see it. Oh, looks like one just came out right. Yep, there's a couple that came out of the opposite backside like that. So I'll stop it there. And we'll take a look. And in this case, it says the approximate integral is... 19.34. For those of you who are not math inclined, all we're really doing is we're taking a cube and we're multiplying the width times the length times the height to give us a volume. And then we're adding up all those individual volumes, filling that space to approximate the space between the outer perimeter of the inner sphere and the inner walls of the outer sphere. All right. So we get 19.3 for the first approximation. That's quite a rough approximation because I've calculated the actual integral to be approximately, uh, I think it's around 29. I think the inner sphere has a radius, for those who want to verify, has a radius of 1, and the outer sphere has a radius of 2. Okay, so let's take a look at, let's, let's change the uh, width, length, and height of a cube, and let's see what happens there, all right? So, so what we have now is I've changed the width, length, and height to be 0.18. Cubes are slightly smaller. And the volume as such is slightly smaller as well. And we can see them floating around inside the cube. There's two of them in there. We can verify that. Two times this number is going to be equal to that number because there's two cubes of that volume. All right, let's run these in here. You're going to see that uh, here's where processing power does make a difference because I'm adding a significant number of more cubes to the scene to approximate the integral. And as it gets maybe halfway filled, it starts slowing it down a little bit. Of course, I am recording this lesson at the same time. That's taking some processing power as well, but let's just see what the approximate integral is this time. See if it gets how much closer at least. Oh, we're getting there. We're looking for that error term. Who would have thought that an error term would be a cube that pops out of the surface of the sphere? 
Okay, so we'll look. If you're an artist like me, this is the way math should be done. I was born looking at colors and patterns, and I assure you, equations for me when I was a kid just didn't cut it. So I've been waiting for a day like this. In fact, maybe this is what Newton had in mind. <laughs> I'm not sure he had fancy equations in mind. Okay, let's see. Just getting there, looking for an error term. Yeah, an error term, that's right. All right, let's see. Slowly pushing them in there. And you can see it's looking more like the shape of this sphere already. It's still squeezing them in, but you can see the uh, value. Let me see. It's trying. You can see it's slowing down. The rate, the update rate is... Oh, there it goes an error term. I love it. All right, so 22.53, whether you're using cubic feet, cubic meters, whatever you had in mind, but 22.534, we'll say, in that particular case. So the approximation is significantly better. So I, so by using different size objects, shape objects, I'm using a cube in this case because it's less demanding on the processing power of the computer. But we can do the same thing for any other size objects. In this case, I can generate all kinds of objects, whether it's, and this will be either polar coordinates, Cartesian coordinates, but I can do the same thing. I can take the cube and it can fill up this volume area right here and approximate it that well, way as well. So perhaps mathematics in the future for calculus won't be a calculator anymore. And perhaps you won't have to do all these integrals and things like that, maybe approximations for a lot of applications, not all, of course. Maybe a good approximation will be adequate and if you're an artist like me, it'll be a lot more fun. All right, well, that's it for this particular introductory video, and there will be a lot more to follow. All right, we'll see you later.